this is John Wilde here to give you another look at cool action figures and this time we're going to be looking at Sir Rudolph the Red Knight another of the Noble Knights one of the earliest companies to use plastic in the construction of their toys Mark's Toys produced toys from 1919 to 1980 and specialized in highly detailed miniature playsets. Mark's Toys produced the Noble Knights in 1968 and they were on the toy shelves until 1973. Two versions were produced in the United States, a gold and a silver version. In the United Kingdom, a Black Knight was produced. In 2001, reissues of the Noble Knights were produced and a new blue color was added. Horses were also produced for the Noble Knights to ride on. Also included were detailed instructions on how to assemble the figure and what the armor was called. Sir Rudolph, the Red Knight, is the latest edition of the Noble Knights. Hey, let's take a look at the packaging this figure came in. Sir Rudolph the Red Knight is actually a custom-made fan figure that I picked up at my local comic shop. He is virtually the same as the originally produced Marks figures. Comes with the same accessories. Everything is the same other than it doesn't have the Marks logo. It's a beautiful action figure so we should open up this box and take a look at what's inside. So the box opens up kind of like a baseball card box. And inside of the box, you have your uh, accessories. There's a, a bag of armor parts here, and the ch chest armor, and it looks like the back plate armor. Then we have a shield. We have a another bag of uh, accessories. We have a one helmet, and we have another helmet. We have the figure itself. So Rudolph, and then we have another of the long accessories, not bagged. Um, there is a, a wood wooden stick in here to make your uh, flags out of. This is a cardboard piece. Looks like that something that you'd build a flag out of, and also a sticker that looks like you could also make another flag out of that. And then finally, we have a feather. Starting with the action figure, we look at his head first. We can see that he has a, a really cool looking sculpted head. He's very serious looking. Um, they, they really did some nice detail on the face. Um, again, the, the ear and the hair is sculpted very well. Checking out on the back of the figure, he's got a, again, they did very nice sculpting. And uh, on the other side, and the head is articulated so he can move his head to the left and he can move his head to the right and looking pretty serious cool looking figure let's move down his body now moving down the figure we got a look at his chest and the sculpted tunic it has a lot of detail that's placed into there and some texture that was added in and it, it really is a as a very nice sculpted uh, chest and this figure is very weighty it, it is a uh, Pretty, pretty much a solid hunk of plastic, other than where it's, you know, where it's articulated at. Um, his arms uh, are attached at the shoulders by a, uh, a peg, and they have uh, just basically just a rotation on them, so that would just go all the way around. Same with the other arm, obviously, it was all the way around. And um, at the elbows, they have a ball joint, and that he'll bend at the elbow like that. And then he'll also swing to the inside. But that's really the only way it goes. It doesn't really go to the outside. It just goes to the inside so he can, he can move his arm in towards his chest. The hands are sculpted um, with some nice detail. Yeah, and it looks like they got some veins and stuff there that you would see on a normal hand. And it's, it's, it's cast in a very soft plastic so uh, the, it, it grabs the uh, accessories pretty well. Well, let's move down to the legs. So let's take a closer look at his legs here. And we can see that he's wearing a, a pair of shoes um, that look like a soft shoe. And got some nice detail around at the ankles showing the difference between the pants and the legs. And running up the side of the leg, there's detail on the leg. 
on the inside of the leg there's not the detail but there's lots of uh, folds in the the fabric and the knees are um, put together with a peg steel peg that runs all the way through the knees and it articulates uh, just like that uh, doesn't have any rotation doesn't have any um, you know side to side movement no rockers at the feet or anything like that this is a uh, uh, really old school uh, type articulation. So his legs will go out and that, as the legs go out they kind of flay uh, outwards and the reason for this is um, he had a, the he came with a horse or would have would have he would have had the ability to buy a horse and that way he could ride on his horse with his legs out in those directions. So um, it, it doesn't lend exactly great for posability. Um, he can basically only get into a kind of a crouch stance like that. Um, but he, you know, he probably wouldn't be able to stand up like that just due to the fact of the uh, uh, of the weight of the figure. So, you know, his 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 stance is is definitely limited by that horse riding articulation. So, let's uh, take a look at the accessories now. Here's a look at the accessories that the Red Knight came with. He came with a dagger and a scabbard. He came with a crossbow and arrows. He came with a mace on a chain. He came with a pike that would be used for jousting. He came with a blunderbuss, a shield, a sword, and a solid mace. Also included with the Red Knight was a wooden dowel and a cardboard flag. But with the new Red Knight, you got a sticker flag with a dragon on it. The Red Knight came with 33 pieces of armor and that is absolutely, I positively, as far as I can remember, the most accessories that have ever come with an action figure. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, you have these, plus we had all those weapons I showed off. So there is just a ton of stuff to get together for a uh, Noble Knight figure, which makes collecting the vintage line a little bit difficult because not only are there so many pieces, but when you assemble those pieces together, there's these little tabs here. And basically to assemble the armor, you have to push this through that tab. And when you would do that, it would lock in there nice and tight. Great, the problem was, is when you tried to take them off of the figure, a lot of the times these would break or these would break. Once they did, it really is pretty tough to repair it. So, you know, trying to find vintage line or vintage marks, noble knights, you're gonna have a tough time being able to assemble a complete one because you've got 33 pieces of armor and then you have all those weapons accessories too, plus the plastic that was used on the Marx figures has, has, hasn't aged all that great. So a lot of the times you'll have cracked elbows and you'll have legs that are off or the hands are gone or and they're repairable. And I know that there's some guys that I've, I've met in my collecting time that they collect Noble Knights and constantly are, are getting parts and repairing them. So th there's definitely ways around it. There's a lot of these accessories are tougher to find. So. Um, we'll take a couple looks at some of the other things. So he's got like some gauntlets here, and he's got uh, he's got this helmet, which always reminded me of a, a Flash Gordon helmet. But it is a um, you know a, a knight style helmet, open face, and then this one is kind of more of like a conquistador, kind of like a I always thought it kind of looked like a Spanish knight style. And then of course he has his regular knight helmet, and. Uh, the face shield there which I can't wait to put this thing together and show you what that looks like and then all sorts of different things so each one of these things have to be individually attached together and then put onto the figure so we're gonna do that um, and you're gonna show off the figure when he's completely armored so here we go here's Sir Rudolph all armored up and ready to go and I have to say Putting the armor on to this figure was a scary proposition, and I did end up breaking two tabs. So let's take a look at where they broke. At the shoulders, these two tabs right there and right there, they, they both split. A little bit of a letdown, but all in all, let's concentrate on the, the positive parts of this figure and not necessarily concentrate on the flaws of the design. Let's move on to the good parts of the figure. Sir Rudolph came with three different styles of helmets, so we'll put them on one at a time and see how he looks. So this is the first style of helmet that he came with. There he is, looking pretty dapper with that style of helmet on. So we'll take that one off and we'll put on the next helmet. 
So here's the second helmet that the figure comes with, and this is more of a, I, I, it just reminds me of a Flash Gordon helmet. Finally, let's show off the, uh, the helmet itself. Sir Rudolph in his jousting helmet is by far the best helmet. So it has the uh, face shield that comes down. You can see his eyes protrude through there a little bit. And that is just awesome. Really, really cool. I mean, and um, the uh, feather on the cap, as they say, is this. The feather that came with the, uh, the set goes into the back of the helmet. This little hole there, it just kind of dropped the feather in there, and then your knight has a uh, feather coming out of the back of his helmet. He's got some plumage, and he is ready for jousting. So this is great. Let's take an overall look at this figure now. Here's a look at the front of the figure. And the back. I really wanted to own a Noble Knight for years, but finding a complete, unbroken figure was challenging. This Red Knight was the answer to my wants, a new complete figure that I could try out collecting a Noble Knight on a budget. But breaking a new toy isn't as heartbreaking as breaking a vintage one. I was disappointed that the first time I disassembled this figure that I broke two tabs. I don't mind gluing the tabs together because I don't really intend on taking the armor off again. The quality of this reproduction is very good. The look and the feel of this toy is comparable to the original. The face sculpt and paint are very detailed and clean. The only downside is the fragility of the locking tabs on the armor. This isn't a play toy, but a collectible for display. The cost of this custom figure is comparable to an incomplete original. So the value of this figure is good if you want a complete figure. The gentleman who sold me this Red Knight said that it was a fan-built custom Noble Knight. As you can see, there's no Marks logo on the box. I hope you enjoyed this look at Sir Rudolph the Red Knight, another Noble Knight. My name is John Wild, and I encourage you to share this video if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel. Please leave a comment too. I really enjoy the discussions that we have after these videos are released. Until next time! None shall pass.